Today I get to present to you the new, brand spanking new, GT Omega Prime Racing Cockpit. This is their first entry into the aluminium profile style cockpit. You'll all be familiar with their, their current sort of products. There were a couple of them in the background there, in fact. Uh, the Art and the Apex. This is now gonna be their top of the tree cockpit and it's set to directly compete with the likes of Sim Labs and Track Racer and all the other manufacturers out there that do these uh, aluminum profile based rigs. Now they are very expensive as a rule. We, P1X is what, seven, 750 pounds without a seat. Track Racer is similarly priced. This is set to undercut both of those by a fair margin. And we're gonna get onto pricing a bit later on. Um, there's also a fairly hefty pre-order discount available as well, should you wanna get one ordered up. Again, we'll talk about that at the end of the video once we find out if it's actually any good or not. Because being cheaper is great, but not if it's not any good. Now, when it comes to aluminium profile, to be honest, there isn't really much you can get wrong. As long as you're using good quality metal, good quality materials, aluminium profile is aluminium profile. You know, you get your corner pieces, you get your nuts, your bolts, you put it all together, and they're solid. You know, they're as, they're as solid as they get from what people tell me. This is my first ever profile rig, so it's gonna be a new experience for me too, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm very thankful to the guys at GT Omega um, for giving me the opportunity to review this prototype cockpit. And that's a good point, actually. This is a prototype. The final version will all be anodized black. And as far as I'm aware, it won't be available in silver, at least not initially. So whilst you see I've got a bit of a two-tone set up here, some parts are black, some parts are just you know normal aluminium color, the final product that you would buy uh, will be anodized black. And personally, that's my preference. I may even take a rattle can of Halford's smooth black to the parts that are silver if I, you know, if I keep this and it becomes my main rig um, to have it all matching, because I do like the sort of darker black um, cockpits. Now, some of you might have seen me mention in other videos, I'm not a huge fan of the way aluminium profile rigs look. I think they look a little bit industrial and I'm quite a fan of the more tubular flowing style cockpits uh, from, the, from the likes of our seat. Uh, and this is still true. From an aesthetic point of view, I'm a tubular guy, so to speak, but that doesn't take away from the fact that we all know aluminium profile rigs are as solid as they come. You know, we shouldn't see any flex, we shouldn't see any wobble, we shouldn't see anything of anything really, it should all just be great. I can already tell you, it's heavy as hell. The box I had to bring up the stairs with it all in, they had some heft to it, you know? And, uh, and like the, the thickness of, of the metal here, which is my camera's set to focus back there, so it might be blurry. That's probably six, seven mil thick. Um, so, you know, this isn't, they haven't cut back on the materials used here to come in at a lower price. Everything that I've handled so far, which is the whole cockpit, is solid. So I imagine once we get it together, it's gonna be equally as solid. We've got a few different bags full of bits and pieces down here. I can see some, some end caps to tidy up the end when it's all together. I can see our corner pieces. Looks like we've got a bag of tools there, some nuts, some bolts. Yeah, it looks like everything's there. The instructions are here and I've had a quick look through them. And um, if any of you saw my Apex rear seat add-on review, I mentioned the instructions weren't particularly clear for that. Um, these are much, much clearer instructions. Uh, I'll just show you the front page because if you're going to buy one, you're going to buy one and you'll get your own set of instructions. Um, I don't really need to show you them all. But, uh, but yeah, so everything's here. I'm going to get this thrown together. Hopefully we won't lose daylight before I get to finish the video today. It's getting a little late in the afternoon here. Um, but I'll get it together at the very least today uh, and then get some equipment on there to give it a try out with and we'll see how it does. But yes, Bear with us and I'll see you in as long as it takes me to put this together. Sped up by a thousand.
Just a quick thing to point out. These um, corner pieces, there's two separate bags of these and there's a smaller bag with only maybe six in or something like that. They've had some of the tabs removed versus the ones in the other bag that have all these tabs. I don't know whether the camera's gonna focus again because it's set to focus in back there, but um, how can I point it out? So one, two, three, four. There's little tabs. Yeah, they're gonna be out of focus, but hopefully you can see them. There's little tabs there. And then on this one, at the other bag, two of them have been removed, so there's only two on this side. So when you're putting this together, don't mix them up. I don't yet know what the six without those tabs are for, but I'm sure I'll find out as the build progresses. But keep them to one side. I'm guessing it's purposeful. And as we get through the instructions, we'll find out. There is like a numbered guide uh, at the beginning. It tells you what you're using for each part. Um, but I just glanced at it and just assumed there was too many of these to fit in one bag, so they put them across two bags. It turns out they are actually slightly different. Anyway. So I just nipped downstairs to grab a tape measure. Um, joining these two main lengths together and putting these bits across here, there is enough play whereby you could have this slightly on the wonk. So getting a tape measure, measuring the distance from there to here and making sure it's exactly the same as on the other side, which for me is 50 centimeters, will ensure that it's square and not on the wonk. Which is, let's go just a touch like that. So also at this point, I'm about to put on these two sections that you would bolt your seat runners to. So at this point, depending what seat you've got to use, you'll either want them further in or further out. So um, I've got an RS9 seat to try with this. Uh, it's in the other room. So I'll probably go and grab that now and get that done. It is getting pretty dark here now. So to be honest, I think I'm gonna pause the recording now and continue this when we get a bit more daylight. Otherwise the video quality is gonna drop and obviously we wanna do this justice. And I don't wanna do a poor quality video either. So um, yeah, um, I'm gonna pause now, but when you see me, we'll fade out and we'll fade into a new scene which will be bright and well lit and we'll carry on the build. See you in a second. So I've got the RS9 seat in here now. It's another day, a little bit brighter. Um, hopefully we won't run out of daylight. And I just thought I'd show it to you before I get it all bolted on. It just comes in in two parts uh, out of the box like this. There's no instructions with it, but it doesn't need to be. Um, you've just got two bolts here, two bolts here. The seat slides on the top here and you do the bolts up. And then you've got one plastic cover for each side. And in a little bag comes the two Allen keys. You need to do these bigger bolts up. And the smaller Allen key does these two bolts up that hold your covers on once you've slotted it together. So that's, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, um, I think what I'm gonna do to make this a bit easier, hopefully easier, is actually bolt the seat, the bottom half of the seat onto this first, because it's gonna be easier to maneuver when I'm trying to get, you know, these the right width apart without the top half of the seat attached. You know, you just be dealing with this. If I need to flip it on its side to screw things in and, and what have you, then I can. So I'm gonna do that. Might be a good idea for you guys too uh, when you come to build one of these. We'll see how it goes, but let's carry on with this, shall we? Okay, so this is the point in time where we need these four corner brackets here with those little tabs removed because the tabs slot into these gaps in the, in the aluminium profile here. Uh, and they keep, they keep these brackets centralized. They can slide up and down, but they can't slide left and right. Now, when we go to bolt this piece on here, the bar runs the opposite way. Meaning if we had those tabs, they would prevent this from bolting flush 
with this piece of profile. So there's four of these with the tabs missing and that's what they're for. Two for each of these. Again, it, uh, this isn't mentioned in the instructions, so it might be another tip as well. So obviously the, the, end, the side with the tabs on will go into here. The side without the tabs will go against that. And the same this end and the same for the other one here. Again, you're going to need your tape measure uh, at this point to make sure these two lengths here are the same distance in from both sides. And of course, you can set them the right distance apart in the middle to match the width of your seat runners as well. Again, this is all really common sense. And as you come to put it together, you know, you'll get your seat and you go, oh, okay, it needs to be the right distance apart. So it's not something that I should need to tell you, but just in case you wanted to know, you know, this tape measure is coming in handy. Uh, a few times throughout this build. Another quick tip here, before you put the seat base on, pull your slider bar up and slide both the runners all the way to the front, making sure they are parallel with one another. That way you can access these two front bolt holes first. So we'll set it on. I've set the profile lengths, the exact width for the seat runners apart. As you can see, it goes straight on. So now I can screw the two front ones down, lift the bar again, slide the seat base forward, and then do the rear two. Again, this makes a lot more sense to do with the top half of the seat off. Less cumbersome, less awkward. So in this next bit where we fix the upright sections on, they bolt to these whacking great steel plates first, um, by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, like this. And once we've bolted these to this, then we bolt the steel plates to the side of the rig. Now this is what's going to give it really good rigidity when it comes to side to side flex. Um, you see exactly the same method employed on the Simlabs P1X, actually. Um, on some of the cheaper sort of DIY ones and ones I've seen for selling the groups, these are actually mounted on the top here like this, using our little 90 degree corner brackets. Now, unfortunately, that's gonna allow for loads of side to side wobble. Be all right front to back, but side to side wobble would be terrible. And this is exactly why Sim Labs and GT Omega have employed this method here. Uh, and I say this is a steel plate, it's not aluminium, because aluminium's soft, aluminium will flex if it was just a plate like this. When it's in sort of, you know, profile like this, the shape of it gives its rigidity. If this was just a, a piece of alley, it would be quite soft compared to steel. So it's really good to see that they've used the, this same sort of build arrangement here to give it the rigidity that we want and we need from these profile rigs. So yeah, let's get these bolted on as well. Now the next bit we're putting on is the wheel deck. And this is also a big, fat, heavy piece of steel, which again is exactly what you want for the wheel deck part of a profile rig like this. This is where the forces that your wheelbase are gonna be transmitted through and the forces that you're applying using your arms whilst you steer as well. Again, you know, very similar design from Sim Labs and, and Track Racer, you know, you probably recognize the shape if you've seen, um, you know, video reviews of their products. It looks like it's pre-drilled for all the usual wheel bases as well. So we'll get this, and, and if you look at the side here, we've got slots so we can adjust the angle and you know, and in and out, and you can get it exactly where you want it. And also with these side pieces, um, before I bolt them on, well, I'm gonna bolt them on loosely. And the reason for that is, with profile rig, everything's so adjustable. So I could have them here, I could have them down here, I could have them all the way back there if I wanted. I don't yet know exactly where I'm gonna want these. So I'm gonna bolt them on loose so that I can slide them backwards and forwards and offer myself up 
you know, in the, in the rig itself once I've got steering wheel and pedals attached and the back of the seat on as well. Uh, once I've done that and got it where I want it, then I'll tighten it all up. Weirdly, at this point, the instructions only say to put four of these little um, sort of back pieces in that your bolts bolt into to each side here for, for this plate, but you, you want to use four a side for maximum rigidity. I don't know whether that's just an oversight in the instructions. Um, there's enough in the bag. I've counted out the rest um, for what we need for the rest of it, and there's still plenty left. So. Yeah, put, put four in here, that way you can do it up as tight as you possibly can for maximum rigidity. And again, here you want to get your tape measure and make sure that this wheel deck is exactly the same distance from the top on both legs or get a spirit level and put it across the middle there to make sure it's level. I have got spirit level downstairs, but um, I can't be asked to go and get it. And also, <laughs> What I'm going to be fitting on here today for this video will just be my Logitech stuff over there. At some point, I'm probably going to be moving my, my full rig, all the stuff off there, onto this. So this is just a temporary setup. Um, assuming I like it, of course, so we'll see. So I'm about to fit the pedal deck uh, and just, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I thought I'd just point it out. I'm fitting it on the, on the uppermost sort of rail insert on here, um, but you can fit it, you know, you can fit it as low as you want. You can fit it all the way down using the very bottom sort of cut out if you want it or anywhere in between. So it's all fully adjustable. I can see now why people really like these, you know, aluminium profile rigs for, for sim racing because you can so much adjustability. So, you know, we can have this, right down low if we wanted to literally even in flat like that we could have it that way around if you wanted to for some reason you know here and, and every sort of increment in between so yeah yeah infinite adjustability really really good to see i'm looking forward to getting this finished So this is it fully assembled. Um, the last sort of little segment of my sped up assembly bit, uh, you missed me slotting the top half of the back seat on. Oh, I'm putting the, these, um, these sort of end caps on here. So um, yeah, I just, I, I paused the recording, come back and forgot to unpause it. But <laughs> all I did was literally slot the seat on, do the two bolts up from the side and then run around putting these little plastic caps, you know, in the, in the ends. Oh, and these things you see here, they're nothing to do with the, uh, with the prime cockpit. They are furniture sliders, um, which allow you to move objects around on carpet a lot easier, especially heavy objects like sofas and stuff. So that's why I've got them underneath here to allow me to move it around on my carpet. But anyway, this is it fully assembled. And the easiest way to sum this up is that what you see here is a P1X with a different pedal tray. Everything else is literally exactly the same. Um, you know, the, the dimensions of it, the, the, the size of the aluminium profile used, the, the wheel deck here, it's, it's all exactly the same as the P1X. And this is a really good thing. So we'll, we'll, we'll start at the top here. You can see it's pre-drilled for all the usual wheel bases that you'd expect. You've got adjustment under here, so you can move this down and up as far as you want within the channels and you can tilt it at whatever angle you wish to tilt it at. Um, these upright sections here, they're bolted on like I mentioned before using these whacking great steel plates. Again, just like the P1X, it's tried and tested, so why not do it, you know? Um, and that allows you, you can slide it forwards, backwards, put it wherever you want 
And then, yeah, the, the real difference is the pedal tray here. The P1X has a sort of quick release um, slider mechanism, just like you would have on your seat, that allows you to move the pedal deck backwards and forwards, you know, sort of very, very quickly and easily. So I guess if that's important to you, if you're someone that needs to move their pedal deck backwards and forwards regularly and easily, then you might wanna go for the P1X. But otherwise, you've got this set up here. It's, again, it's pre-drilled and slotted, so you can, all the usual pedals will fit. You can slide them where you want them to go within this itself. This is a big, thick piece of steel, uh, as are these uprights here. You've got your different slots here to adjust your angle. The whole thing can move backwards and forwards. I've got it in the top uh, channel here, but it can go in any of the four visible channels, giving you even greater adjustment there. And again, you don't even have to use these. If you wanna sort of lower this whole tray right down to the bottom, you can then just screw from the inside into these channels on the inside, just like this end is here. So you've got, you know, you've got infinite adjustment there, isn't it? It's, it's spot on. I'm, I'm really impressed, to be honest. I mean, and again, you know, it's a carbon copy of a, of a P1X, so why wouldn't it be good? The seat is fixed on in exactly the same way with your 90 degree brackets here and your profile across there. It's all, all exactly the same, all tried and tested uh, and, and exactly what we know and what we want from an aluminium profile rig. One other thing, this comes with a shift amount, uh, a standard, whereas the P1X does not. And again, it's all pre-drilled for your various different shifters. And, I'm, and, and looking at it, I haven't checked this with GT Omega, but looking at it, it's actually kind of geared toward perhaps a sequential shifter and a handbrake style setup. I mean, you can fit your usual, you know, Fnatic shifter and what have you, but it look, it's that extra bit wider, allowing you to be able to fit, you know, a couple of peripherals there. So that's a nice little touch as well. Again, the way this is fixed on here and down there, that little bracket, all exactly the same as the P1X, literally right to the 90 degree brackets there. So you know exactly what you're getting, a tried and tested formula. I'm really impressed. Uh, and we'll get to the pricing a little bit later, but I can already tell you, it's gonna be almost 200 pound cheaper. So that is a big saving. Uh, and if you don't need a pedal tray that slides backwards and forwards at the pull of a lever, then there'd be no reason to buy that. You just wanna buy this one, it's, it's really that simple. Uh, what else we got? So the RS9 seat. Now some people say if you are wide, someone with quite a wide back, that they prefer the RS6 seat because this one is a bit more sort of curved and, and perhaps pushes your shoulders in a little bit. Now, I've not had much time in this seat yet. I love the way it looks, by the way. I really like this sort of detailed stitching um, and, the, and the flared sort of upper section there and even the the middle, you, you, let's call that a ball bag, so you can rest your balls on it and it's going to support them like an airbag. Um, so I really like the seat, the look of the seat, and it's really comfortable to sit in. I will say, you know, it does, it does curve around here and it does sort of round the shoulders forward a little bit, but I have a feeling, once I've used it for a while, your arms are out gripping your steering wheel anyway, so your shoulders are naturally forward. I don't think it's going to be a problem for me, um, but you know, I'll give you my feedback on that, perhaps in a different video where I compare this RS9 seat to one of the RS6 seats I've got under those blankets there. And the reason they're under blankets is because my cat Ori likes to pluck the back of these chairs if I don't leave them covered up. So that's why they're covered up. But yeah, the seat's comfortable, it's good. Again, the seats are all optional. You can choose whatever seat you want, or you can just buy the rig without the seat. But that's, that's it as far as a close-up look goes. It, there's literally nothing bad to say about it at all. It ticks all the boxes as far as an aluminium profile rig goes. And it's a tried and tested formula in the way it's been constructed and in the way that they've given um, the sort of the plate with the adjustments and just everything. It's, it's, it's all tried and tested. It's a P1X with a different pedal tray and with a free shift amount. So you just can't go wrong. Oh, one thing I mentioned in the assembly that the instructions only say to put two bolts in here, one here and one here, and I said we should definitely put four in to prevent any sort of movement. I spoke to GT Omega about this. They're gonna amend the instructions and include some extra bolts and T-nuts so that we can do that. It's, you know, simple little things like that make all the difference. 
it may not have moved, but when you've got slotted fitments with only two bolts, if you're using something like a direct drive wheel, there might have been a chance it could move. And for the sake of an extra couple of bolts, it's easy to eliminate those problems. And that's exactly what they've done. So they've taken that feedback on board, which is great. But anyway, what I'm gonna do now, um, spin the camera around, take you through the pricing and the various options. I'm also gonna throw my Logitech setup on there and I'm gonna take it for a little drive. It's almost gonna be pointless because you're not gonna see any movement. You're not gonna see any flex, any wobble. Aluminium profile rigs do not flex and do not wobble and this will be no different. But I'll do a little driving segment right at the very end anyway, after I've talked us all through the, the pricing and when it will be available and how you can order it. So let me, um, let me get the tripod out and I'll see you in a sec. So let's talk about the most important thing here, which is price. We've already established that what we're looking at is essentially a P1X with a different pedal tray and a free shift amount. So that's pretty much all we need to know. The build quality is exactly the same. Everything's exactly the same. It's just cheaper. Uh, and with that, you know, with that different pedal, pedal tray. Now I am gonna do a driving segment in a, right at the very end of the video. I know some of you will like to see it. Uh, and I can already tell you, it is an absolute pleasure to sit in and, and to drive even with this, you know, base level Logitech setup. Um, there's something I've, I've sort of discovered whilst trying this out, which I'll talk about in a different video. Um, but yeah, even with this, this sort of low entry level stuff, the difference you notice between something as solid as this and coming from something like the Art or the Apex, which are perfectly good cockpits for their price point, when you step it up to the, the high end like this, you notice the difference. Now, you might be wondering why on earth have I fitted all this low end stuff when I've got Fnatic pedals, shifter and what have you over there. Well, the reason is, that is all gonna come over onto this and this will be my main rig, but it's gonna take me a good day or so to do it because I've got a motion platform there that's all custom fit to that. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fit it to this. I've got wind, I've got tactile transducers, I've got a digital dashboard, uh, I've got a new handbrake to fit to this actually. I've got a Husingveld uh, handbrake. Um, that wasn't sent for free, I've had to pay for it, ouch. Um, so it's gonna take me a while to do it. And the biggest problem I've got is that right now, if I move all my, day to, my daily driver stuff over here, I've got no monitor mount. And as, as you guys will know, you can't see it in the video, but you'll already know if you've seen my other videos, my 50 inch TV that I use for racing is mounted to my art cockpit on the art monitor mount. I don't have one for this, and there isn't one available at launch. Or, or now. So if I move everything over, I'm gonna to have to race using this TV in front of me, which means I need to leave this in the middle of the room. And it can't normally be in the middle of the room because my sofa's in the middle of the room when I play VR here and all sorts of other stuff as well. So waffling on, I know, but that's why we've got Logitech on here and not all my sort of higher end or mid range stuff. Um, but nonetheless, anyway, let's get back to this. So first and foremost, let's talk about the price. The price at launch, for the cockpit only, including free shipping and a shift amount. So everything you see here, barring a seat, because you can choose whatever seat you want, it's 569 pounds, 95 pence, including free shipping. Now, if we compare that to say the P1X, 632 pound plus shipping and without a shift amount. So already, there's sort of a hundred odd pound difference once you factor in the shipping and the shipping, or just over a hundred pound difference in actual fact. Now, if you pre-order this, and the pre-order window is only available until they start shipping in December, so next month. Once they start shipping them, the pre-order window closes. If you pre-order through my link in the description, and at checkout, add in the code PRIME10, this will all be in the description. So click the link at checkout, add in this additional code on top of my normal one. You'll get the rig for 512 pounds, 96 pence. So just over 500 notes with free shipping, with the shift amount included for a full top of the range aluminium profile rig. Now that, in anyone's book is an absolute bargain. That's almost 200 notes cheaper than the competitors. The track racer is actually even more 
um, the TR160 than what the P1X is. So it is an absolute bargain. Um, as I say, the, the, the extra 10% is only available until they start shipping them in December. So if you want one at 512 notes shipped to your door, you need to get the pre-orders in before they start shipping. That's super important. Now, they also offer interest-free credit over three months, which works out about £170 a month, should you want to spread the cost. Makes it a little bit easier. And this is also available, I think the, um, the credit is also available in America as well for US customers. It is going to be available globally. Um, and then come beginning of 2021, so January, February, there's going to be a whole load of additional mounts, fittings, and options. So things like a monitor, stand, single, triple, um, additional mounts for handbrakes and shifters. So like, for example, that's a universal sort of shifter and handbrake mount that's there now pre drilled for all different ones. There will be specific shifter mounts, so like a Fanatic, a bit like um, Simlabs do. You can buy a specific Fanatic shifter mount. It just neatens it up a little bit. It's no more or less solid. In fact, this whole thing is stupid solid. The driving segment that you'll see me do at the end is almost comedic because this, this thing has no move. The whole thing is just like, I can move it on my carpet. There's no, there's no movement in, in anything at all. Not side to side, not front to back. I mean, like, this is thick steel, there's no way. I mean, like, I, could tear, I could tear this off before this breaks in. The same thing, I don't know whether you'll see it, but the shift amount here, this is like six or seven mil steel plate here. It's just, you know, I could bend the rig potentially before that comes off. It's all just, it's all just as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, so there will be additional, you know, I'm, I'm really quite excited to be using this. You can probably tell, because <laughs> it's my first ever aluminium profile rig, and I can see now why people use them. Um, but yeah, so there'll be additional mounts, options. I imagine they'll do a, um, a DD, like a Fanatic DD fitting uh, plate for, for, the, for their DD1 and DD2. Again, a bit like you can get for CM Labs. So instead of using this universal wheel deck, you'll have the ones that come in from the side. Uh, that is only an assumption. All they've told me is that there's a whole load of accessories and amounts and fittings coming early next year. So I'm, I'm guessing that's probably going to be one of them. There'll probably be things like butt kick amounts, tactile transfer, all the usual bits and bobs you'll expect from the other manufacturers. They're all going to be coming sort of early part of the year. But for now, this is what you can pre-order. They have three different seats available, RS9, RS6 and the XL, which I don't have one of. Um, and yes, the price right now, with free delivery, £512.96. Click the link below, use the additional code PRIME10 and you'll get one delivered to your door at some point in December. Now I think that's pretty much everything we need to speak about with regards to this. You've seen me throw it together, you've seen how solid it is, you've seen the design, the construction, how it mirrors the other top end profile cockpits on the market. It's all, it's all just good and it's all at a good price as well. So um, yeah, if you want one, go get one. And I'm really, and a big thanks to the guys at GT Omega for giving me the opportunity to have one of these, to give my feedback, um, you know, and where some of the things have been done and they've changed a couple of things according to my feedback, which is great, making it a little bit better for everybody. Uh, and, what, and again, I'll just remind everyone, these will come in anodized black they won't come in this bare aluminium option that you've got here. Although I actually quite like this sort of two-tone effect that I've got going on with the black wheel deck, pedal deck, seat shift amount, uh, and then the, the silver, you know, aluminium as well. But hey, yeah, that's, um, that's what you'll, you'll get, anodized black. So uh, yeah, I'll hop in, I'll do a little bit of dirt rally for you. Um, you're not gonna see any movement in anything. Oh, speaking of movement, the seat, Every seat that has an adjustable rake, adjustable back section, will always have a little bit of movement. And this really is, I don't even know if you can see it, it's very, very small. But because you have you know, a ratcheted mechanism here, there has to be some movement for the teeth, otherwise it wouldn't work. So aside from that, and that's normal in any seat, it'd be normal in your, in your car seats in real life. Go out to your car, you'll feel a little bit of movement in that upright section. But yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just great, and I'm super chuffed to have it and be given this opportunity. Anyway, I'm waffling on as always. Thank you all very much for watching. 
Thanks to DT Omega for this. Let's put up a little dirt rally segment now and I'll, I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, take it easy. Right, let's do a quick driving segment in dirt rally. I know some of you guys appreciate driving segments. I won't talk much. I'll try and actually put in a half decent time, shall we? It's weird, I'm used to reaching for my, my handbrake and I don't have it, it's on the paddle. There's this fucking hairpin then. Here it is. wasn't going too badly. Ah, oh, we'll carry on. Well, it's a reasonable save. Uh, where are we going? This way? Ah! Probably should have chosen a stage that I know, really, shouldn't I? Well, anyway. Shall we? Yeah, oh, no, that would do. Anyway, there we go. I'm sure there was no movement in the rig or anything like that, you know, much like we'd expect. Um, so yes, I have nothing but good things to say about this new DT Omega Prime. If you're after an aluminium profile rig and you don't need one with like quick release pedal adjustment, then I would say this is the one to go for just because it's that little bit cheaper than, than all the others, you know, and especially if you're here in the UK, um, they'll be available next month. As I say, pre-order discount, 512 notes delivered to your door. Sounds good to me. Um, I look forward to getting all my other sim racing gear set up on here um, and, um, and this being my, my new daily driver. So big thanks to the guys at GT Omega for it. And thanks to you all for watching. As always, take it easy.